Hello and welcome to my tropical style garden here in the UK. I thought I'd do a little video where I take a walk around, have a chat about what looks good, what hasn't worked so well, um, what I've changed, what I didn't change. And um, yeah, just basically talk tropical gardening to be fair. Um, I've done a few videos recently where I've sort of showed the garden um, with a bit of music and that. And to be honest, it really sort of uh, makes my garden look a lot more glamorous than it really is. I'm very good at just showing you the best bits, as most people would only want to do that. But um, realistically, there's loads of bits that need loads of improvement and work. And I thought I'd show the garden realistically as it is and let everyone make their own judgment to how it's looking. So I'm going to start off over here with a border that always gives me a bit of a nightmare to be fair. Some of it's a bit arid looking, some of it's a bit tropical looking. I said last year that I'd probably take the moose out the back, didn't bother. Um, it was unprotected over winter, I've left it. It's still early, it's only, like I say, uh, end of July time. So plenty more growth for plants like that to go yet. So down the bottom, we've got here a new old Stromera, which I really liked. I think the colour is absolutely stunning, especially against the black leaves around it. Now, the slugs are just eating the hell out of it. It's doing my head in. I don't use slug pellets because we have a dog that likes to eat everything. So I go au natural. And um, yeah, seems to have a bit of a problem with the old Stromeras and getting eaten to bits with as with a few of my other plants. I tend to not grow too many plants that the slugs love to eat, to be fair. So I don't grow hostas anymore. As much as I love them, they just get it. So going around here, I took some cuttings of my Striatula and I've put them in there, give them some time, see what they do. Should be all right, it's a bit of a raised bed. That's my Camarops serifera that I've said before in the past, it got transplanted from the front. It's doing all right, don't look great, but it's holding on in there. Hopefully it will um, get a few more roots down and perk itself up. Then we've got, what we got here? Salvia Amistad. One of the, there's about three plants in there. One of them survived for our last winter. The others died, so I've put another couple in there. But should um, start flowering a lot more soon. Absolutely stunning purple flowers. So I've got a bit of a colour theme that goes through the garden. I tend to like to use the burgundy ready colours, the blacks, and you'll probably see that I use them quite often through the garden, sort of bring a bit of balance to it. This is what's probably known as canna red velvet. So if anyone out there grows um, canna Cleopatra, it's variegated with these burgundy red leaves and green. If I can um, do some editing, I'll probably put a picture of that up. But it also sends off offshoots that are just pure ready burgundy colour, which is this. And if you separate them, they will stay that colour. They won't revert back to the variegated. And I think this is known, it's been named a few times, but generally red velvet is something that this kind of goes under. I grow, this one in particular was in my greenhouse over winter. Whereas, I'll get to it in a minute, there's one in the corner there, over near the path, that stayed out all year. Generally, any cannas that I grow in the garden, stay out all year. So, what else have I got in here? This new plant to me this year, really like it. Euphorbia Miner's Merlot. Love the new growth where it comes out the ready colour. Picks up really well with the canna. And then next to that, there's, uh, if I remember rightly, Salvia Cherry Lips, I think is the name. So we're trying to bring 
some balance to the color throughout the border it's not totally right in my opinion there's still bits that aren't working um i'm going to keep playing around with it try and get it right by the end of the season let's carry on around I spent way too much time on that bit of the border this is well pick a name really i've seen it sold as canna patterns i've seen it sold as canna limbata i've seen it sold as canna brasiliensis so seed grown canna stays out all year round just like a dwarf variety plain green leaves but these orange and red flowers produces loads of seed pods very easy from seed cheap fills gaps behind it Mahonia soft caress oh, I've, I've had a brain melt can't remember the name of it now if I remember it I will put it up on the screen if I don't I won't but that has to come into the greenhouse um, not hardy at all Pittosporum tom thumb with the black leaves and then there's a uh, Brunera somewhere under this Camerops humulus Trachycarpus this bit of the border usually flash past because always struggle with it too many roots on too many of the plants really hard to underplant it I have got some Canna Tropicana gold I really had to try and dig quite a big hole there and improve the soil because it just weren't going to like the soil that was there. And we've got a Hebe. Um, just some Stratula cuttings. How not to grow a loquat. Obviously these grow into beautiful tropical looking trees. Mine just looks like a bush because it's got to deal with everything else around it. But still foliage wise very very tropical looking camera up tumulus down there nowhere near enough room for that as it gets bigger yucca rostrata just went in as a small plant does absolutely fine loads of overhead protection but pretty hardy well very hardy i would pretty much say then we got here we go again look ostromera Eaten to pieces. Slugs and snails. Doing my head in. There we have. Psychas Revoluta. Getting ready to flush. Loving it, loving it. Bear in mind, we had a really, really hot June. And dry. And then July. Terrible. Cloudy. 20 degrees Celsius, which is all right, but it doesn't make the real tropical stuff grow too well. What else we got here? It's getting a bit um, congested in this bit of border now. The formium doesn't do great there, to be fair. Probably should either dig it out and try something different. Don't know why, to be honest. Down the bottom there, Trachycarpus princeps so 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 slow that has been in my kids bought it for me on a father for a father's day present probably i'm guessing about eight years ago and it hasn't done much but the last year or so it's decided to start growing so hopefully i can do a video in about eight years time of it looking really quite smart but for now be patient and wait Another red velvet, the red version of Canna Cleopatra. Cordline Torbay Dazzler. Stayed out all year round. Did have to give it a little bit of protection for a couple of them coldest nights. But I've said in some of my winter videos, I did only get minus five. So let's go back a bit. In this border, Yellow Wave. Was gonna totally take that out. But decided to sort of prune it right back so I could underplant it just to see if it would sort of get through my criteria of um, being garden worthy. I can t 
I sort of like it. I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, Yellow Wave is one of my favourite formiums. I just don't know that's the right spot for it. But I've managed to colour it up a bit by underplanting it. And I, to be fair, one of the stars of the show, Ostromira, Indian Summer. Yep, the slugs are eating it a little bit, the foliage, but the flowers. Honestly, first year I've ever grown this, and I don't know why. I don't know why I haven't grown it in the past. Um, see it on a different YouTube channel, and just thought that is absolutely stunning. And I think next to the dark leafed Eucomis, looks really, really good. And then going from there, zoom out. We've got Tropicana Gold, and this is a seed grown dahlia got no name for it because it's a bit of a some sort of hybrid between I know Bishop of Landaff was one of the parents so it's probably classed as a, one of the Bishop's children let's go back out so we've got camera ops humulus finally my transplanted palm I don't know, in four or five years now, it's decided to start growing. And hopefully we'll become the sort of central specimen that I got it planted there to be. Okay, whoa, let's go across here. Tetrapanics. This was an offshoot that I said I was going to take out that came from the mother plant back there which has only ever sent out one pup in all the years it's been in that's a fat sea polycarpa by the way so this is the one pup said i was going to take it out because it was blocking the path pushed out these nice big leaves and thought nah staying we'll see we'll see what happens doubt i'm going to take it out now it's probably going to let it grow big give me another canopy over the top give me some more height all right let's go back out here so here we have the shady border did a bit of a video on this a little while ago uh bits i like bits i don't like the ericaceous acidic bed in the corner duh, duh, not working i'll do a video on that the rhododendron is not looking good um at the bottom here quick look through we've got some dry octris ferns we have akuba rosani rosan one of them then we've got rogersias let's see what we've got everyone asks about this begonia and that's gone out of my head again as well the name will come up on the screen if i've edit, edited it right let's go back out we've got alpina zerabut that is not planted in the ground that is in a pot i tend to just bring them in the greenhouse for winter bring them out the greenhouse for summer what am i about okay this is another Fatsia polycarpa Edward Needham form. Now, a bit later on, I'm going to show my other uh, three, but this one I want to make a point of is in near total shade, and you will see it looks really green, healthy, no leaf curl. A really good example of how this should look, and we'll compare it to the other one afterwards which is a bigger plant, but in my opinion, doesn't look as healthy. So let's go out, what we got here? We've got Eucomis bicola. It's a bit shady there, that's probably why it's not getting ready to flower, because the ones around the corner are. Persicaria, purple fantasy. Astelia silver spear. 
Colocasia gaoligongensis. Easy for me to say, I suppose. Ooh. Right, this border still needs a little bit of work. Not quite happy with it. Not everything in here is planted. A couple of bits are in pots because I'm testing to see what I like, what I don't like. Eucomus there. We got the hookah, not looking great. I think that's lime light or something like that. You got your Impatians, New Guinea. Then that's just chucked in there a pot. But can I intrigue? If you haven't seen it, it looks like Bird of Paradise. And it's a really, it really is a nice can. I've got a real big version. I should try and get a picture of that up sometime. Okay, let's go out, let's go out. Okay, lots of green in that border, very shady. Get some late afternoon sun. Um, not one of my favorite borders. Needs a little bit of tweaking. Okay, take a walk around the back, which I'm not gonna cover too much because I did a video recently about just using green for shade. Talked a bit about it. But this is the walkthrough round. That's a Schiffler Taiwaniana, and it's just in a pot for now. I've got to figure out where I'm going to plant that. We've got to bring some real colour to it. Carex Everillo is the lime green grass and above it is Nandina Domestica. I hope I just didn't move the camera too fast there and make everyone dizzy. Mahonia soft caress. Now I'm gonna move to the left to the border that needs a lot of work because I don't like it. Iris confuser, slugfest. Absolutely just been eaten to bits. Gotta take it out don't like it and replant this whole section up what I do like though is this Persicaria Virginiana variegata if I remember correctly really like this Persicaria give it a moist spot a bit of shade and yeah really nice then we've got the back we've got that variegated anonymous We've got a, a Cuba Japonica, seed grown Fatsia polycarpa. And then we've got Camerops humulus, which is was originally in sun, but over the years now it's quite shady, but do you know what? Still looks quite good and healthy. And now this is too shady in here. This has got to come out. Canna Russian red. This is a canner that gets really big, about three meters tall. And it's telling me it does not want to be in this spot. So that's got to be dug up and I've got to find a new place for that. So what else have I just been doing? I decided, and this was a tough decision, Brassioptis, Brassioptis mitis. Yesterday I planted it. I potted it up. I've said in one of my previous videos, I paid £145 for it. Travelled hour and a half to get it. Absolutely love the foliage on this. But I know in the winter, we previously had a lot of people had them knocked right back down to the ground. So I don't really want that to happen. So I may have to just wrap this one up or give it a bit of protection. But it is in really quite a sheltered part of my garden. So... Hopefully, I can let it grow really big. Okay, this is the end of my garden where I just use greens or variegated greens. Water feature went in this year. Um, houseplant. Alocasia dragon scales, I think. Literally. Bought it for 10 quid yesterday for it can sit out here for summer and then go inside terrible valocaceous really good with colocaceous terrible valocaceous put some planting in here some new plants bought this weekend 
nearly all greens did go for a slightly darker um begonia there which is a tender begonia bring it in for winter but everything else in there is hardy if you want the names leave a comment and i'll uh see if i can um sort that out let's go up here so this is my other path through and actually probably one of my favorite views of the garden a couple of gaps to fill but generally it sort of gives me the impression that i want it to give and then brings me back round to the shady border when i designed this garden it used to be just straight borders down each side so i had plenty of lawn for the kids to play football but as they've got bigger I decided to go on a circular theme and give me a sort of protected, I don't know, um, quiet area down the bottom of the garden, which I think I've achieved now. So zoom round to the right. I've skipped that bit because it looks rubbish. It's probably, it used to have like a seating area there, arbor type thing to sit down on. And I'm probably going to do that. Go on, let's go over there. So I'm going to show the bad bits of them as well. Okay, so that needs something there. Water feature, an arbor. Not sure. Still trying to get me head around that. Okay, let's go around to the tree ferns. Yeah, really happy with this area, to be fair. Minimal protection through winter, but like I say, I didn't get it too bad. It's come down so around here. This water feature I've put in this year, just planted it round with ferns, wanted it to look quite natural looking. Um, really like it. Gives me a lovely sort of, when I sit down here, peaceful view of the garden under the tree ferns. Now this is mainly, if I can get a shot of it over my sun loungers, it's mainly fat seers to be fair. Another, it's very shady. That's another fat seer polycarpa Edward Needham's form. Looking really green, no leaf curl, anything. Spiders webs, regersia. Loads of palmate foliage. So this is my other fat seer polycarpa, and it's my biggest Edward Needham form, biggest and best one, but it does get quite a lot of sun when it's high in the sky this time of year. And if you look, it's a lot lighter green than the ones in shade. And it does tend to curl the leaves. So what I'd say would say is if you grow it, can it tolerate quite a bit of sun? Yes. Does it look better? The more shade it gets? Yeah, totally think so. Okay, let's go back. I think I've generally covered most of the gardens a little bit round by the gate, but not too much to show there. Persicaria. Red dragon. Oh, just show you over here. Okay, so we got Colocasia, Morning Dew. Brought it out of the poly, uh, greenhouse. Looked absolutely stunning. But because we've had such a cool July, it's just stopped growing a bit. It's a, quite a tropical Hawaiian Colocasia. The leaves have got a bit mangled by all the wind and that we've had recently. But it really is. A nice looking colocasia with glossy variegated leaves and next to that we have one of my favorite cannas this is canna tornado and it has not the most outstanding but does have variegated leaves and it does have very very red flowers 
it's actually quite quite expensive in the UK at the minute you use I think I paid about 40 pound originally for a tiny little offshoot in about a nine centimeter pot but that was probably a fair price because you just couldn't get hold of it now I have three good size clumps um, I think it was well worth the purchase now and you know sometimes these more unusual plants are quite expensive like cannas and colocaceas and stuff like that but the fact that if you can keep them alive and propagate them you could potentially sell some of the bits and get your money back at a later date might make it worth an investment um it's nice to have them plants that are a little bit different to everything else right i thought i'd have a chit chat for anyone there that's uh can be bothered to watch it all the way through thank you very much for watching any comments i love talking about gardening don't be afraid to leave them uh, any questions pop them on thank you for watching see you next time